Hallelujah. Good, good, good. Are you happy? I am frightened. Let me drink some water. When I am frightened, I drink little water. <laughs> I'm a humorous person, okay? So relax. I'm so happy. Anybody from Kashmir? Jammu, Kashmir? Somebody there. I was there last week. I was born again there. I started my ministry in Katra Vaishno Devi. Then traveling all over the world. Anybody from Kanyakumari? No, I see somebody there. So I can go and brag about myself. When I was preaching in Bangalore, people from Kashmir and Kanyakumari and Rajasthan to Nagaland came to hear me. So I'm going to brag someday. No, 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 I'm joking. I, I, I always start my message with a joke. I have 378 jokes, all numbered and kept in my idiot box. Which one you want? Ladies, give me a number. I will say the same joke. <laughs> give me a joke. <laughs> that is not a good joke. <laughs> but since you asked for it, I'm going to say that. Say that. You know, in the olden days, there used to be circus. And along with that, there, sometime there could be an aeroplane two-seater aeroplane. I saw that in Trivandrum when I was a small boy. I'm not that old, you know. I'm, I, I, I may be bald, but I'm not old. My birthday is only in my driving license. I'm actually 49 plus. <laughs> I'm celebrating my 31st anniversary of my 49th birthday. <laughs> Calculate it. I refuse to say my age. When I was a small boy, I went to Trivandrum Airport. My, my mother took me there, and I saw a two-seater plane. And I was told that if I'll pay 30 rupees, I can go around Trivandrum for 30 minutes, 30 rupees on those days. I think my father's pay was 75 rupees at that time, high pay. So there was an air, air, airport and aeroplane here. Somebody came from the village. His name is Adam. And the wife's name is Sarah. And he saw the aeroplane sitting there. And there was a pilot standing there and announce, giving announcement. I can take you around Bangalore City if you will pay me 100 rupees. He said to Sarah, Sarah, I want to go. I never got into a plane. And I'm 75. I don't know how long I am going to live. Let me go. She said, no. 700 rupees is 100 rupees. Next year also he came for the circus and he saw the plane and the announcement, give me 100 rupees out here. He said, he said, Sarah, let me go. She said, no, 100 rupees is 100 rupees. 76th birthday, 77th birthday, 79th, 80th birthday. He came and there was pilot standing there and saying, Give me 100 rupees, I'll take you around of Bangalore, you can see for half an hour. He said, whatever it may be, I'm going, I'm going. And she was saying, no, 100 rupees is 100 rupees. The pilot heard it. He wanted money. And he came to that man, aged man, 80 years old, and said, sir, I can give you a free trip for you and your wife, provided you will say that you will not make any noise when I'm play, flying the plane. He said, OK. They got into the plane. But the pilot wanted money. When they were up, he was going up and down, left and right. But he was not making any noise. They landed. And he told to Mr. Adam, I said, you are a brave man. I thought when I was going up, turning it upside down, you will shriek. He said, Actually, I wanted to shriek when my wife fell through, but I thought 100 rupees is 100 rupees. <laughs> so brothers, teach good things to your partner so you will live last and you will be a happy person. I'm from Delhi, and there is somebody from my church here, Delhi Church. Brother, 
I'm sorry I forgot you. But I remember your wife. Do you know why? She's a servant. In our church, she was always a servant. Never in the church, but helping people. And I used to hear you. You used to come as a secretary of the church and making an announcement. But you changed in a few years. But forgive me. I'll go back and tell your wife, tell my wife that I've met you. I hope I, before I leave, I'll leave, I'll see your wife also. Okay, anybody else from my church? Delhi or any other IET church? Here, yeah, no. <clears throat> Do you have your Bible? Good. You must have your holy Bible. The Bible is called a Biblio. Biblio means the book. Not holy mobile phone. Not holy iPad. I'm not against it. But it is better to have a Bible, printed Bible with paper and a pen so that you can write down, you can underline, you can make a note, something. Always have a Bible. I'm not against a mobile phone. Don't misunderstand me. Okay. Uh, which chapter I have to speak from? Can somebody help me? Psalm 91. I have a question. Pastor, how much time I got? Two hours? <laughs> now tell me the truth. Huh? Now it is 11.45. Come on. You are joking. Do you, th do you think that I came all the way from Delhi to Bangalore to speak for 45 minutes? Nah. Two hours. Don't worry, I'm a military man. I, st I, I obey. I'm married, I obey. <laughs> so I'll, <laughs> I'll stop on the prescribed time. Psalm 91. I have a question. Which is the central chapter of the Bible? Anybody? Eh? One? Are you sure? Are you sure? Oh, you know the Bible. Abby, are you here? My rep here? No. Give me your telephone number. I will send you a gift. I promise. Uh, can, other than him and his wife, can somebody tell me which is the central verse in the Bible? Which one? 118 and 8. Give me your telephone number too. I will not ask you for money. I will not ask you to change your church. But I would like to send you a book free. You can give me your telephone number in a, written in a piece of paper and uh, the language you prefer. English, Malayalam, Hindi. We don't have Kannada. We had one Kannada. Okay. Psalm 91. It is good to know something about the Bible. Psalm 91. Let me read in New King James Version Bible. That is the Bible you use. Even my grandson, I was coming here, I said, what would you like to have? He said, New King James Version Bible. That is the Bible my pastor is using. So it's a good translation. I'm using King James Version Bible. I tell to the people, don't use New King James Version. Use only King James Version Bible because that was the Bible St. Paul was using. You can laugh if you, did not, if you did not understand that joke. It's a joke, okay? But let me read it from New King James Version Bible. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In him I will trust. Now, this is a message I'm preaching for the third time in my life. Third time. Twice I preached in Kerala. I'm coming from Kerala. Now, let me preach to you what it means to me. You can trust God. That is the subject of my message. You can trust God for any need you have. Everything is in this chapter. Hallelujah. He that dwelleth in the secret place. We must live in the secret place. England is a land of castles. Many, many castles. That is very famous for castles. Actually, whole Europe is famous for castles. And the castle is for a king. 
And there is a place, in the center of that castle, there is a place called a keep. That is where they keep all the treasures of the king. And the treasure is called the keep. So the king keeps the king keeps the treasure. Sorry. The king keeps the keep in the keep of the castle. We must be close to the bosom of the Lord Jesus Christ, the secret place. You can come to the church, you can raise your hand, you can clap, you can dance, you can recite Bible verses, you can sing songs, but at the same time, you may not be in the secret place of the Lord. Be in the secret place, in the heart of the Lord. Close to the heart of the Lord. Hallelujah. A person who is, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, El Shaddai. The word Most High, it is El Shaddai. El Shaddai means, you know, you've got a wonderful pastor. We hear his messages. We get all his books. We buy them by hundreds and distribute. I'm not joking. And I'm amazed that this man, you know, he's investing the money in North India. I know that. He does not have any benefit from that other than heavenly benefit. So this pastor is teaching you the Bible. You know the word, the meaning of the word El Shaddai. El Shaddai means one who is more than enough. I wrote a book, The Key to Miracles. Anybody read that book in Malayalam or any other language? Key to Miracles. We, did, we could not sell it as much as we want. We did not sell too many copies. We sold only 80 lakhs. That is the, my first book, El Shaddai. I explained it. Actually, the word El Shaddai does not mean on who is more than enough. That is not the meaning, but that is what the pastors will preach from the pulpit. But the real meaning of El Shaddai is the... Let me Christianize it, because I'm speaking from the pulpit. The chest of a woman, of a feeling woman, to a baby. To that baby, the chest of the mother has everything. The security, the vitamins, the water, the closeness, you name it. Which my God? He has everything I need. He has everything I don't have to be afraid of. Then he will say, let me read that again. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Verse 2, and I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him I will trust. You can trust him. Now some of the translations say, I will say of the Lord. But some other translations say, you can actually have both the meanings. I will say of the Lord to the people, or I can talk to the Lord. Both the, both the meanings are there. I will talk to the Lord. What it is? Three things. Number one, hallelujah. I will talk to the Lord of him. He's my refuge. Who wrote this song? Moses. And Moses know the meaning of a refuge. God told him to have, when he was dividing land, there must be some, some places of Moses and Joshua. They left some places, some cities as ref, cities of refuge. So he knows what is a refuge. <laughs> when you are in trouble, you made a mistake. Okay, what is a city of refuge? Suppose a person has done something wrong by mistake. He killed somebody, not intentionally or intentionally, but then he regretted. I made a mistake. I must run for my life. And he's running. He can go to the city of refuge. He's safe. You are safe in God. You are safe. Suppose you make a mistake. Suppose you did something wrong. What you should do? Go to the refuge. Who is my refuge? Jehovah. Who is my refuge? El Shaddai. So I will talk about my God. After my, before my salvation, I did thousands of mistakes. But after my salvation, still I did something wrong. One day I slapped my wife. Don't tell anybody. I know about the people of this church. 
If I will tell them something, they will never disclose it to anybody. But I tell you, when I was in Katra, I slapped my wife. And then another day, I was in Punjab as a missionary. I slapped my wife. And another day, I slapped her three times in my life. But every time, I ran to the refuge, my Lord, and I said, I'm sorry. This is an older story. Don't think that I slapped her last night too. It was about 45 years back. But because I ran to the refuge, he changed me. He can change you. Not only that he can forgive you, but he can change you. Whenever you make a mistake, whenever you commit a sin, whenever you do something wrong, dearly beloved, don't live with it. Don't live with it. Don't carry that burden. But run, run to the Lord, the city of refuge, and say, I'm sorry. And I asked forgiveness to my wife also. Once I was, I was going to ask her forgiveness, the devil asked me, I was going home to ask her forgiveness. And the devil asked me, where are you going? I said, I'm going home. Why are you going? I want to ask her forgiveness. The devil said, don't do it. If you will do it, she will be the master of the house from tomorrow. I said, devil, you never tell the truth, but today you are telling the truth. <laughs> but I went and I asked her forgiveness and God delivered me. It did not come in one day. That is why I said, I repeatedly, I did it three times, but God delivered me. You may ask me, have you ever felt like beating her again? Yes. But God help me. God will help you. And number two, he is my refuge and he is my fortress. What is the fortress? We all know. The kings in India, as soon as they will become, come to the throne, they will build a fortress, a fort. For what? For their safety. Which my God is my safety. And number three, is my fortress and in whom I will trust. I will trust him. Any type of need. When I'm in trouble, I will go to him and he will help me. I will trust him. I, very often I tell God like this, Lord, I trust you. I trust you. I trust you. <laughs> okay, let me go forward. He gave me only half of my time, so I have to go fast. Verse 3. Soverly he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Actually, I have 20 stories to tell you. 20 stories. So here comes the first story. Verse 3, surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. Who is the fowler? The devil. He got arrows. He will come after you to, 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 to induce you to come, commit some sin. To force you to say something you, do, you are not supposed to say. To do something wrong. He will come. Or he will come to attack you with a sickness, with a problem, with a difficulty, with a mental trauma. He can come. And then what? Remember this verse. He, ca he, will, he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. <laughs> Story number one. My, we were in Punjab for nine years, from 1977 to 85. We, were, we rented a house to start a Bible school. My office, my store for the literature, the kitchen, and my bedroom. That is our facility. The rest, everything is for the Bible school. On day four, Sardarji, Sardarjis came. I'm not putting the blame on Sardarjis, but this is the fact. Three, four, Sardarjis came. They said, we, you, are, you are a preacher. You are distributing books of Jesus Christ. We are interested to hear about Jesus Christ. Can you tell us something? Something about Jesus Christ. So, but they smelled whiskey. They smelled um, alcohol. But still I preached to them. Because God can save anybody. Finally they said, we don't have anything in our religion like this. Can we come tomorrow? Can you say something more? I said, come. But don't be drunk. Next day they came. Evening. 
And I talked to them about Jesus Christ. So the first day when they came, Lily, without telling her, she bought tea. That is the Indian culture, especially Punjabis. So she gave the tea to all, the, all of them. And they were looking at my wife just like a hungry boy looking at ice cream. My wife is very clever. She ran. And next day they came. They said, teach us, talk to us about Jesus Christ. I said, Lily, four cups of tea, please. She was very clever. She made the tea and sent it with the Bible school students. She did not appear. But they were looking at the kitchen. And uh, I talked to them about Jesus Christ. They said, this wonderful news. Can we come tomorrow too? I said, yes, please. Uh, no, no, not tomorrow. Why? I said, tomorrow I'm going to Khadar Bhandar, another place. How far they know Khadar Bhandar? How do you go? I said, look at that bicycle. I had an old bicycle at, at that time. I said, I will go on that bicycle. OK, what time will you go? By 6. What time will you be back? 10.30, 11. OK, we will come day after tomorrow. So the next day, I went to Khadar Bhandar to have a home meeting. And then I could not come on time because it was raining. And it was dark because of the rain. And on the road, it was about five, six hours. Uh, f mm, yes, sir. five, uh, uh, no, 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 five, six, six kilometers. And uh, I was riding the bicycle. And I was frightened because there are thieves standing on both the sides by the side of the trees. So I was frightened, I was riding, and I was praying, hallelujah, glory to God. I was shouting, not because I'm a very spiritual man, but, but because of the fear. <clears throat> I'm like you. I came home, <clears throat> I tried to push open the gate with my bicycle, but it won't open. I parked the bicycle, I looked inside, it was locked. Now, she never locks the door, the gate, when I'm coming home. So I was angry. See, the Kerala pastors, when they are hungry, they are angry. So I was angry. Well, she locked, locked me out. So I banged on, it's a, metal gate. So I banged on the door, gate, and said, Lily, Lily. The light in the bedroom went on. She opened the window, through the grill, she said, who is that? Tanda Bhartav, your husband, come on, open the door. She said, I just want to make sure it is you. Something is wrong. She opened the door. And the Bible school students, they all came, they were shivering. I knew something happened. I parked the bicycle, went into the bedroom, she made a cup of coffee and gave it to me. And she told this story. You remember those four Sardarjis? I said, yes. You told them that you will not be here from 6 to 11. So they came in a tractor. One man sat on the tractor and he left the engine running. So that if there is a noise, any noise inside, no other person will. The houses are nearby, very, very, one, one after the other. So one man was sitting on the uh, tractor. Two men were standing outside with knives in their hands. And two men went into the bedroom where the, the classroom, where the Bible school students were sitting and studying, and said, don't move. How are the boys, about 10 or 11, under 20 years old, they were all frozen. They were sitting there. And one of them went to the bedroom where my wife was sleeping. And he knocked on the door. My wife opened the door. She said, yes, but we came to become Christians. She said, come tomorrow. My husband, that is the business of my husband. I'm a cook here. I prepare food for the Bible school students. That is my job. They said, no, we want to become Christians now. Let me come in. She said, no, you shall not come in. I may cry when I say this story. You, can, you should not come in. My children are sleeping inside. We are sleeping on the floor. We are poor. <sighs> don't come in. My children are sleeping. And not only that, I don't know to talk about Jesus. He said, OK, then give me some books. I will go home with the books. He knew where I'm keeping the books after. 
It's a small cellar. Only one door, a very small room. He wanted her to go to the cellar. She, she's not wise. She, no, she's wise but not very intelligent. She was going from the bedroom. She was going to the literature room. She was going. She heard a voice. Lily, run. She looked. She saw the man coming after her. The smell of the liquor. She looked at the gate. And there are two men standing there with the knives on the back. And the tractor is running. There is a man sitting there. And she shouted, Johnny. Johnny is still with us. He said, Johnny. Johnny got up, but that man standing there said, Sell. And that 19 year old boy, he was frightened and he sat down. Lily had nowhere to go, and she heard the voice again Lily, run. There was only one place for her to run her bedroom. Bedroom here, and she's standing here. The man is behind her, between her and the bedroom. And she believed in God. <sighs> And she said only one word prayer, Eshwe, Jesus. And she ran to the bedroom. She ran. He's standing there, but trusting in God, trust in God. She trusting in God, she ran to the bedroom, and she locked it, and she, she started to speak in tongues. She said, I stood there and spoke in tongues for 10 minutes. <laughs> then she wondered why that man did not follow her. He was, he was standing between her and the bedroom. She opened the window and looked out. Do you know what she saw? She saw that man standing there in running position. He could not move. He was frozen. God made it. Maybe she said 10 minutes as an exaggeration. Maybe it was only 5 minutes. Maybe it was only 2 minutes. Maybe it was only 1 minute. But that is one of the greatest miracles we have experienced in our life. God protected her. God protected her. He will save you from the fowler. What? I'm not bragging that God did it for me. I'm telling you that what God did for me, he will do for you too. When you are in trouble, when the fowler will come after you with the arrows of him to catch you, to hold you, to do something wrong. Remember this verse. Hallelujah. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snakes of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Hallelujah. We, you know, we, our spirit, our soul got saved, but our body is not saved. As such, we are living in this world and we will have different kinds of problems, physical problems, sickness, malaria, diabetes, or heart problem, or COVID, or whatever it may be, can come because our body is not saved. But he can heal us. He can heal us from any kind of disease. I'm a person who sees miracle almost every day. My coworker, Shaji Vargi says like this, a day without a miracle is a boring day. I see miracles every day. Let me tell you how he delivered, delivered me from a sickness. In 1984, 1984, my father died. And I was in Singapore at that time. And I got a telephone call. But on those days in my place, I'm coming from a very tiny village, mountain village. There is no mortuary. So I got a telephone call in the night. Your father died. And even if I will fly from Singapore to Kerala, I will not be able to see his funeral. So I said, let me finish my preaching, then I will go home. My father went to heaven. I'm also going there. And when I came back to Patan called Punjab, I went to my home. My mother started to cry. I said, mommy, don't cry. I don't like believers crying when a believer will die. If somebody will die, I understand their pain. Everybody is, does not have the same spiritual caliber. So I said, Mommy, don't cry. Papa went to heaven, and we are also going there. I, we sat in the same sitting room. I spent only one day in my home when I'm going to Kerala. The rest of the days I'm preaching. 
We sat there for three, four hours. And uh, then my mother asked me a question. Are you diabetic? I said, no. I was 42 at that time. I said, no. She said, I think you are diabetic. You are scratching your body. You can watch me. I'll be scratching my body. I still got the symptom. I was scratching. She, she said, you are scratching your body. You drink too much water. And you use the bathroom very often. These are the signs of diabetic. I said, no, I don't have. My mother said, give me a test tube. And said, give me some. Can I use a a word that is not supposed to be spoken from the platform. She asked me for urine. I know I must not say, use that word, but I have to tell the truth. And because my father and mother, they were chronic diabetic patients, there was a table with all the facility to measure the blood sugar. And she took it there, added some medicine, and warmed it in the old, olden days. And she showed me that. The color was of the brick break. And she showed me the chart. That me and my mother said, you have exactly the same quantity of blood sugar as your father had when he died. He did not die because of the blood sugar. He died as with a diabetes, or oh, sorry, heart attack at the age of 76. Same. I was frightened. I'm only 42. And I'm traveling in the villages. I'm not in the cities. I'm always in the villages. Even in the Kerala, I was in the villages, not in the cities, in the remote villages. And I was frightened, how I can take tea when the people will give me a cup of tea? I cannot tell them, no, I want, give me another cup of tea. They may not have milk. They may not have tea leaves. But when they will give me rice, I cannot say, give me chapati. They may not have wheat flour in their home. I wanted to be in the villages. Not only that, I have a problem. I like sweet. I like sugar. My sore pack. Ah. Ah. I thought, how will I survive as a preacher, village preacher? Then I remembered this verse. He will heal me from every kind of pestilence. I, God gave me some faith. I came home, went home, but thank God. And we had dinner, and I told my wife, go to sleep. She said, what are you going to do? I said, I I, I'm going out. I want to walk and pray. She said, there will be snakes. We had four acres of land in the Bible school. And she said, no, no. I, I said, no, snake will bite me. You don't worry. You go to sleep. And she went to sleep. I walked out. I wanted to be alone. I stood in a place where she cannot see me through the window. I wanted to make sure that she will not see me. If she will see me, what I am doing, she will call the Mendel Asylum and ask for an ambulance. I stood there and I prayed, Heavenly Father, I am your servant. I did not become a preacher because I wanted to become a preacher. You forced me to become a preacher. You gave me a vision. <clears throat> you gave me a burden. And now give me the health. Take away this disease from me. And I prayed a, 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 an experimental fanatic prayer. I said, let the blood sugar in my body go to the ground through my legs. Let the blood sugar in my body go to the air through my hands. I'm a person who makes experiment. And I caught hold of a plant over there. I said, let the blood sugar in my body go into these plants in Jesus' name. I had faith. Next day, I went to the laboratory. I gave my blood. The laboratory technician, Annie, she took my blood and gave me the report. Don't eat sugar. Don't eat jalebi. Don't eat rice. Don't eat potato. I said, okay, I will come tomorrow. She said, you know, you don't have to come every day. You have to come only once in a month. I said, I'm a different Pentecostal pastor. I'm not an ordinary Pentecostal pastor. I'm a different man. I will come every day till I get my miracle. She said, okay, we need money. Come every day. <laughs> and I went. The same thing I did. I don't, I don't want to take that. Same thing. In the night, I asked her to sleep. She does not know what I was doing. 
And I prayed the same prayer. And the third day, the second time I gave my blood, I got the same report. The third night, I did the same thing. And the fourth day, I went and gave my blood. I got the same report. On the fourth night, I went there and I stood. I prayed like a crazy person. And I believed. And next day, I went to the laboratory. That, that, that laboratory technician is still there. Once I was preaching in Kollam, and she was there. She stood up and said, I am here. And I went, next day when I went to the lab, I gave my blood. In the evening, I went, went to collect my blood report. And it said, and she came back, came to, my, came to the front room. And she started to shake her head and said, Pastor, she calls me brother. And she said, Brother, I don't understand it. For the last four days, you are a chronic diabetic patient, but today you are healed. You can eat as much sugar as you want. God heal me. <laughs> oh, some people will say, Okay, I know how to get my miracle. I will do the same thing. But let me tell you, you are not going to get it. I will tell you why. Because you are duplicating a faith of a man. Duplicates never get the miracle. You have to make it original. I know people who got the miracles just like that. How? Make your experiment an original. And God will answer you. My God healed me in 1984. Now, even after 40 years, do you know how much sugar I eat? Ask my daughter-in-law. She's at the back. Ask her. Hallelujah. If you will give me 100 gram or 250 gram Mysore pack, I will sit here and eat it. Try it. Try it. I'm, but don't think I'm a fool. Don't think that I, I, I make mistake. No. I'm very careful about my health. I go for four, four, four kilometers walk every day. I know what to eat and what not to eat, how much quantity I should eat. But my God healed me and I'm still healed. Hallelujah. My God, my God, my God, hallelujah, hallelujah. Verse 3, 3, 3, chapter, chapter, verse 4. He shall cover thee with his feathers. He will cover you with his feathers. My mother, I'm coming from a mountain village. My father was working, and at the same time he was a farmer. He had a few cows in the house. My mother had chicken. And we have seen how a hen will protect the chicks. I have seen that. When it will see the shadow of an eagle, it will put out its wings and cover. Let me read that again. He shall cover thee with his feathers. <laughs> he will cover you. Hallelujah, me. Hallelujah. One day I was in 19, let me think, 1990. 1981, I was in Orissa. And for the first time, I went with my wife and children. I am not a person who is sitting behind the desk and running a mission. I'm in the mission field. I'm always in the mission field. And not only that I'm in the mission field, I will take my wife and children so that they will feel my, my burden. They will feel it, not only see and hear it. So I was there with my three, four children, four children at that time. And I was in, the mount, in, in a place called Nabarangpur. Anybody from Orissa? Nobody? I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Normally there will be some people from Orissa. I was in a place called Nabarangpur. And there was a nurse, a mission, there is a mission hospital, German mission hospital. And there was a nurse, a Christian, Lutheran. And they had a son, Das. And we were preaching together. He was not working with us, but he was a young man who wanted to work for God. And then he invited me for a meal in his home. I went there. And when we were having food, two young men came running and said, Vargis, don't get out. Remain in the house. There are some people standing outside. Behind. There are Plenty of trees there. It is like a forest. It's not a forest, but there are some trees, like a oak trees, big, tall trees. And he said, come here. He asked me to look through the window, and I could see the, 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 the flame 
of the cigarettes. They are hiding behind the trees and they were smoking. I could see the flame and also I could see the smoke. They said, they are waiting for you. They will attack you. They will attack your wife. And they have decided to put the cigarette butts, burning cigarette butts on your children. So don't go out. I said, okay. He sat there. We sang a few songs. Then I got this Bible verse. Then I remembered this verse. I got it like a, a rhema. He shall cover thee with his feathers. I said, we are going out. Thus said, <clears throat> don't go. I said, I got a rhema. I'll go. I asked my son to walk in friend. He said, he was only 10 years old. He said, Daddy? I said, walk, I'm, I'm with you. And all my children, 12 or 4 children, then my wife somewhere, and I'm at the back. I'm walking. Believe me, if you want, I can give you the address of another person who walked with me, Sahu. We walked together. Either God blinded their eyes, or he covered us with his feather. I don't know, but it actually happened. My God is your God too. The same way he protected me from my enemies who wanted to harm to me, he will protect you too when they will come to attack you. <coughs> Verse 4, the second part. And under his wings shalt thou trust, feather and wings. Hallelujah. The wings, the wings, the feather and the wings. You are safe under his wings. You are safe under his wings. Once I was in a <coughs> Kashmir is a place of mountains. From Jammu onwards, up to Jammu, it is flat, just like Punjab. But from Jammu onwards, it is all mountains. And I'm working in a place called Katra Vaishno Devi, a Hindu pilgrim center. And there was no Christian at that time when I went there, not even one Christian. And God gave me a vision about the people on the mountains. Now, where there is a valley, a good valley, a basin, there will be good soil. When the rain will come, the rain will bring good earth, and there will be people living there, settlements, three families, five families, two families, like that. God gave me a burden to reach them. I was a soldier, so I'm not afraid. I, I was very healthy. So I could climb the mountains. And one day, myself and another young boy by name Lalu, 18, 19 years old, we went to a village called Sarsund. We had to cover three village, three mountains and reach that mountain village. I, in, in the mountain, you can stay in any house. It's like the Bible time. You can ask the people, can I sleep here for the night? Not only that, they will give you a place to sleep, they will give you food also. So we found a house. I told them who I am. I said, they said, okay, stay here. I said, I would like to sing a few songs for you. They are not Christians, they are mountain people. I would like to sing a few songs for you. But you have to invite your neighbors too. I will sing songs. They agreed. So I thought, I have two, three hours, let me go. I could hear the sound of a stream nearby. So I went there, washed my face. Then I came out, huh? washed my face. I sat there, I still remember, reading the New Testament for three, four hours at a time. Then a Hindu sadhu came. Do you know what the difference between sadhu and sannyasi? Many people do not know. Sadhu is the person who dedicated his life to become a sannyasi from his childhood. They will not marry. Sannyasi is a person who will become a sadhu any time of his life. 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, 60 years, 70 years. So he may be married, children. So that is, he was a sadhu, a well-built muscle man. And he had his hair all tied up. And he had a small axe on his shoulder. Mountain people walk like that to protect themselves. And he had a bam, bam, stick rod in his hand, bamboo rod. And he was coming. 
people looked at me. Because there on the mountains, people don't wear clothes. They have only G-strings. The men have only G-strings. But we had pants, shirt. He looked at us and said, who are you? I said, I came from Katra Vaishnu Devi. When I was speaking, he said, no, you are not from Katra Vaishnu Devi. Your accent is different. I said, yes, by mistake, I was born in South India. But I love Kashmir. He said, why are you here on the mountains? I walked about 30 kilometers away from the road. I said, I'm, I'm very careful. He's a sadhu and he got an ax in his, on his shoulder. I said, I give advice to people. What kind of advice? Don't drink, don't smoke, don't commit this, don't commit that. One day we will die, we'll go to heaven. We have to give an account of everything. Which book you use? I was in trouble. Konsa Pustak. I said, Bible. He was angry. He took the axe, coming close to me, and said, you have converted all the people in South India. Not only that you came to North India, you are coming to the mountains also. I will behead you now, and I will push your body about 10 feet, 10,000 feet down. Nobody will know. There is no police here. Okay. And the young other boy, Lalu, he was only 18 years old. He came and hid himself behind me and he said, Uncle, I won't call him. He will kill us. I did not have to think that. I was standing there. I still remember. I was, I was not thinking anything. Standing there. Right then, a fair colored man from nowhere, I don't know from where, he came running. He caught hold of that man and said, leave them alone. They are good people. Come on, I will take you to the temple. He was dragged to the temple. We came back to the house I was staying, and I told them the story. They asked me too many questions. And they said, oh, that sadhu is a very cruel man. When he will come and ask for food, if he will not give, he will get angry. He will do many bad things. But fair colored man. 35-year-old, well-built. No, nobody is there like that. In this village or in the neighborhood, even if there was one man, one man, how did he know that we are good people? That is what he said, they are good people. Maybe it was an angel. I'm not sure. The lady of the house, a grandmother, how old she was? She was about 60 years old. Then she said, your God is my God. Next day when I preached, she asked me a question. Within three days' time, will you baptize me? I took her to the same temple where the sadhu was. He was not there. I baptized that mother in that temple pond because of one miracle. An angel came to rescue me. Wish my God. <laughs> This God is your God too. Hallelujah. He will cover you under his wings. And you can trust. The problem is we don't trust. We don't trust enough. Trust him. Hallelujah. He will be your shield and buckler. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. His shield and buckler. Hallelujah. In truth, you can trust him. You can trust him. Is truthful. The original language it says not truth. You know, it says, his truth shall be thy field, shield and buckler. His, his truth. His truthfulness. <laughs> he can trust his truth. His faithfulness. His truthfulness. You can trust him. Your neighbor may do something. They may spread a scandal about you. They may spread something wrong about you. But don't worry. He is your truth. He will protect you. I can tell you many stories, but I, I have 20 stories. What can I do? Your pastor gave me only little time. Hallelujah. Let me go. Let me go. Let me go. Let me. Hallelujah. Let me see. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Verse 9 and 10. Verse 9 and 10. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, the habitation, hallelujah. He's my refuge. He's my fortress. I can trust in him. 
you can trust in him. When you are weak, when you are frightened, just to trust in him. Sometimes it will be difficult. When it is difficult, trust him. When it is easy, trust him. We moved from Punjab to Delhi in 1986. My last boy, he was only three years old at that time. And uh, it was very hot. We were living in one room. We were poor. And uh, one room, and it's very hot. The temperature goes to 46 degrees. So it is difficult to sleep inside the house. So if it, when it is not raining, we, somebody gave us a long uh, uh, mat from Saudi Arabia. My wife will spread it outside and sleep there. It was common on those days. So she was one day, one night, I was not there. She spread that long mat, plastic mat. And Lily, my last boy Ray, all other four children. And two sisters, they were all sleeping. I'm not there. After midnight, she felt as though somebody is staring at her. She opened her eyes. She saw a man on the terrace of the building. It's a single-story building. She saw a man on top of it wearing black underwear. There's a group, anybody from Delhi, they can understand. There is a, there is a group of thieves called black underwear people. They wear black underwear in the night, apply oil all over their body. They'll go and steal. If somebody will catch them, they can run and save themselves. They can run. My wife saw one of them standing there, and he was staring at her. And she knew he can come down with a knife, take the small boy, put the knife on the throat, and say, give all the money. Of course, we did not have, we were poor. But that was a rich man's area. We were the poorest. And he was staring. And my wife prayed, Jesus, let this man go. I trust in you. I trust in you. I trust in you. You are my shield. You are my buckler. Do you know what happened? <laughs> that man from that building jumped to the next building, then went to the next building and robbed them of every valuable thing they had. My God protected my wife and children. The same God is your God. Just to trust him that he will protect you. Let, can I read that again? Verse 9 and 10. Hallelujah. 9 and 10. Because thou hast made thy Lord, which is thy, my refuge, even the most high, the habitation. Trust him. When you are in trouble, when you are in need, trust him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 13. Verse 13. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou tramp tremble upon thy feet. Hallelujah. How you can do it? A snake, the big snake. I'm coming from the mountains. I've seen the big mountains, big snakes. I've seen them. One of them swallowed my do our dog. I know. But the Bible says, was well, a small snake or a big snake or the biggest snake, you can tread upon them. Your problem may be small. Your problem may be poisonous. Your problem may be big. Your problem may be very big. But because God is your refuge, he is your buckler, he is your shield, you can tread upon them. You can tread upon them. God will give you the power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He will provide you whatever you want. Hallelujah. Sometimes the, the snake, you know, snake swallows. It doesn't chew. It swallow. It can swallow your peace. It can swallow your health. It can swallow your money. It can swallow your business. It can swallow your marriage. It can swallow your children. It can swallow. But at that time, what you should do, you tread about them. You walk over them. You jump over them. You kick them out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One day in 1986, 1986, we were living in Delhi, the same house. Somebody gave me from Kuwait. A man gave me the money to have a telephone. I get plenty of money, but I scatter all over North India. I forgot to save something for my future. Intentionally, I forgot. 
So don't think that I was living like that because, and I don't take any money from the mission. I don't take any money from the church. And one day, the telephone, somebody gave me the money to have a telephone, and the telephone rang on the evening. And uh, the voice other person said, we are from Kerala, we are officers of the Salvation Army. We want to come to your home right now. I looked at my wife. She said, tell them not to come today. We don't have milk. We don't have anything in this house. So tell them to come tomorrow. We will pray and get something. So I told them, don't come today, come tomorrow. They said, no, we are leaving to, to care love tomorrow, so we are coming now. They put down the phone, land phone. I said, Lily, they are coming. I don't know what to do. She said, I don't know. She started to go and search all over the house for some money, some loose change. And she found two rupees. She said, praise God, I got two rupees. We can buy a packet of biscuit and a packet of milk in 1986. And my daughter Annie, she said, mommy, don't touch that money. That is our best fare to go to the institute tomorrow. She said, don't touch, we need two rupees. Three children going to the, the institute. And said, don't touch that money. My wife said, when God is with you, there is a miracle in the evening. There is a miracle in the morning. There is a miracle at noon. There is a miracle in the evening. And she said, if the miracle has to happen, the postman has to come at 10 o'clock. We have to go to school at 6 o'clock. My wife said, no. When God is there, it can happen even at midnight. You will go to the school tomorrow. But today we are going to buy some milk and a packet of biscuit. And my daughter was angry. My wife <laughs> took that money and she told to the second boy, Blessing, go and get a packet of milk and a packet of biscuit. And he went. And in the meantime, the, other cup, the couple came. And they came to give us a testimony. When I was preaching in Trivandrum, and praying for the sick people. The lady had breast cancer. And when I prayed, she was healed. She so they came to give us the testimony. But you came on the wrong day, man. <sighs> the, my wife gave them tea and biscuit. We prayed for them. And we said, it is about 9 o'clock. We said, we will come to the best stop with you. We walked to the best stop. We stood there. The bus came. Number 500, 500. It came from Sakit. And I showed the hand, and they got into the bus. The husband first, the wife first, the husband second. And both of us, both of them gave, shake, shook hand with us. And when, when the bus left, we said, hi, 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 you came on the wrong day. But then my wife said, Achaya, that is how they call it in Kerala. She gave me 10 rupees. I said, he gave me two ten rupees. I looked at it. It was not ten rupees. It was hundred rupees. Lily looked at her money and said, it is hundred rupees. We got two hundred rupees. Now, come, come with me. I will show you the place. <laughs> we, we danced from that bus stop to our house, D174. We danced. We said, when God is with us, there is a miracle on your left side. There is a miracle on your right side. There is a miracle on the front of you. At your back, there is a miracle. At the feet, at your feet, there is a miracle. Or on upside you, above you, and we walked into the home. We opened the door and called all the children. Called any, come here. When God is with you, there is no time limit. It can happen any day. Hallelujah. He's our supplier. Just to trust in him. He's your security. He's your health. He's your healing. How, how many stories? I, I said only five. Pastor, you say the rest of the story tomorrow. But today let me go home. Hallelujah. He's our refuge. Trust in him. He's your protector. Trust in him. He's your provider. Trust in him. Hallelujah. Let me tell you one more story. Hallelujah. God. We moved to Punjab from Kashmir. I'll try to finish in three, four minutes. If I can. Don't believe me. <laughs> I'll finish on time. We moved to Punjab. My children studied, three children, two children studied in, in mission school for two years. My son was in second class. Then we got admission for them in a Catholic school. There they have strict rules, you know, for dress, dress code. In the summer, they have to wear shorts and half-sleeve shirts, ash color and white. 
But in the winter, they have to wear full pants, ash color, white shirt. So the notice came from the school, from next Monday, it must be winter dress. I was not there, I was preaching somewhere in some village. And my son came, he was in the third grade. He came and told my mother, here is the book, the diary. My wife said, your father is not here. He has gone to preach and we don't have money. Why don't you go to the bedroom, kneel down, and pray to your father in heaven. Thank God he knows how to pray. He went to the bedroom. He knelt there and he prayed. Father, my earthly father, he has gone to the villages to preach. So I am asking you, give me the money to buy a pair of pants, long pants, ash color. I taught my children, when they are praying, they must pray specifically. If you are praying for a car, you must pay, say which color you want, which make you want. If you are praying for a husband, you must say what are the ten qualities you, they must have. Height, weight, uh, mustache, hair like, I'm not joking. I can stand here and tell stories after stories after stories how people got what they prayed for. That is what the Bible says. Say about him. It is not saying think about him. So he prayed, white full sleeve shirt, ash color pants. And he came. He's seven years old. He's or eight. He's sitting on the on, on the for, on the table for lunch. The postman came. He said, who is Abhi Vargis? My wife said, this boy. This boy? A registered letter has come from Singapore. No fool will send a letter to, the, to a boy of eight years old, a registered letter. But God can make somebody to make that mistake. Abhi Vargis, my wife signed it. Open the envelope. There was, you will not believe me. There was a blank check, bank check in the name of, of Abhi Vargis for 700 rupees. On Mr. K.K. Vargis made a mistake. Nobody will make a blank bank check for a boy of seven or eight years old. But my God can do it. He did it. Then the postman said, there is another parcel that was in my name. She opened it. There was a long white cloth, and there was a letter. I'm sending it for the children to make shots. Who will send white cloth for a seven-year-old baby? Only God can make it for you. This God is your God. I'm not a hero. Don't misunderstand me. I'm an ordinary person like you. The only, only plus point is that I make, mis I make experiments. And I get result. You can also make an experiment. What is it that you want? Can I pray for you? If you have a need, one need, don't pray for two, three needs. Just to concentrate on one need and stand, please. I'm going to pray. First ten people will get miracles. The rest will get after three years. <laughs> I'm serious. I know some people I have to plead. Anybody else? Anybody else? Okay, if you are insisting, I will stand up. <laughs> I'm going to pray. You are in debt. I pray, Lord, clear that debt. Lord, you need a vehicle. I pray in the name of Jesus. Close your eyes. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, let them have that vehicle. Lord, they want to get married. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Lord, let them get a husband, a wife of, 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 of the points they are praying for. Let there be a miracle in the name of Jesus Christ. Finance, health, peace, whatever it may be. Even the, for this church, I pray, let them get a land, a beautiful land where they will have a church building. Hallelujah. And the people can come and sit and worship and say this is our own building. No hindrance in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I pray. Let there be a miracle. I pray, let them get a miracle. Lord, Lord, I pray. 
I let them heal thee. The disease I command you. Physical health. I pray let them get it. In Jesus' name. I pray let them get it. In Jesus' name. Peace. In Jesus' name. Lord, those who are going through divorce, I cancel that divorce proposal. And I pray let them get reconciled and let them live in good peace in the house. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I bless this church. Bless them. Thank you, Father, for answering our prayers. Can you raise your hands and say, thank you, Jesus, you answered our prayer. If you dare to believe, if you dare to believe, say thank you. Your miracle is coming. Your miracle is coming. Your miracle is coming. My last story. I did not want to say that, but it's coming to my mind. A man in Australia, they were pastor, poor. His son told me this story. They were poor, and there was no food in the house. And they were praying, God, and they read Psalm 23 and said, God will provide. And it started to snow. It started to rain. And they closed all the doors. And then they said, the father read the Bible and said, the raven of Elijah will bring us breakfast. And they thank God. And the boy, the boy who told me the story, the son, the last boy of the family. He went to open the window. And the father said, close it. It is snowing. Close it. He said, no. If the raven will come, there must be a door or a window open for it. And then somebody looked through the window and said, I'm banging on the door. Open the door. The father went and opened the door. It was a merchant in the next village. He was ta carrying wheat flour and sugar and other things to his shop in a horse cart. Then it was raining. He said, it's raining. My wheat flour will be gone. My sugar will be gone. You take everything free. They had dinner. Same God is God. <laughs> Believe God. Elijah died. The raven also died. But God of Elijah is still alive. Amen. Trust in God. Go home and see how God is supplying what you ask for. Please do, me, do a favor to yourself. Write down what you prayed today at the last page of your Bible. The need and today's date. And see how God will provide for you. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor. Man. Let's put our hands together. Thank you. Martin. Thank you so much. Man. Bless you. See you in oh, Delhi. I'll see you in Delhi. Okay. <laughs> October, yeah. There's going to be a conference in Delhi in October. Yes. Uh, it's been uh, wonderful to know Dr. P.G. Verghese and uh, received through his ministry. Let's give him one more uh, big applause. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. God bless. Amen. Let's uh, close. Um, and, uh, we, you know, it's just wonderful to hear these stories. It encourages our hearts all the time. Amen. And uh, just know that our God is alive. God is still at work. He's doing wonderful things. And thank God for people like Dr. P.J. Vergis who are serving all around the country uh, and, and many people like that. So let's thank God. Father, we thank you. For this morning, just speaking to our hearts, encouraging our hearts. Thank you for Dr. P.G. Verghese and his wife, Lily, and their children, their families, and uh, for all the ministers who are part of uh, the Indian evangelical team, their churches, for their entire team. Father, we speak your blessing. We pray the work will continue to grow, continue to bless our nation and the neighboring nations, God, and we just pray that you will surround them with good people, Lord, that raise up great leaders in their midst who will continue the work for years to come. Thank you for your good hand upon their lives, upon their ministry, upon the people serving God. Thank you for your hand and your continued work, Father, in Jesus' name. 
Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the sweet fellowship of His Holy Spirit be with each of us always. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for listening. We trust this message was a blessing to you. For more free resources, including sermons, sermon notes, and books, please visit apcwo.org. For information on APC Bible College in Bangalore, visit apcbiblecollege.org. Do remember to download the All People's Church Bangalore app from the Apple or Google Play Store.